Good morning, Pastor Johnson. Here in my backyard uh, in Elkhart, Indiana, Pastor of Life Tabernacle Church, bringing you an encouraging word. I'm going to read from Corinthians 15. We've been on a discussion of the uh, the apostles and their response to the resurrection and their uh, ongoing uh, growing in their faith, their ongoing recognition of who Jesus was. It was a process to understand who he was, what he was doing, uh, and their faith had to be developed, which is the same for all of us. All of our faith is not fully formed in an instant. We may have faith in an instant, but it's not fully grown and it's not fully understood. Um, I've seen a lot of people get baptized, receive the Holy Ghost, who really didn't have a great grasp of uh, who Jesus was and what he intended to do in their life. So let me read from 1 Corinthians 15. I'm jumping out of the Gospels um, and looking at uh, Paul writing a retrospective. He's looking back instead of a, uh, an, an eyewitness account. He's looking back at what he has been told about the resurrection. 15 and 3 says, for what I received... I passed on to you as a first importance. So it's something he had been taught. He had come to believe uh, about Jesus. And this is what he said he had been taught. And then he's come to believe that Christ died for our sins according to scriptures. That he was buried and raised on the third day according to scripture. And then he appeared to Peter. Then to the twelve. After that he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time most of whom are still living, Paul uh, is emphatic to say that, that it wasn't, that the record that he was declaring was not uh, a distant record. It was not hard to believe. There's a number of the people that actually saw that appearance that were still around as he was writing this. Um, though some have fallen asleep, obviously he is referring to their death. Verse 7, then he appeared to James then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born, for I am the least of the apostles. So he goes on to describe his uh, apostleship. Our conversation has been about um, their growing response. And so in this scripture, you get a very, very short synopsis of most of the appearances of Christ. And it is written again in a, as a retrospective, a, a historical reference. This is something I've been taught and now I'm teaching you. So uh, you can learn from that, that uh, what you're taught, you should pass on. If you don't pass on to the next generation, uh, what you're taught and what you teach dies. It takes a single generation for the gospel to die. Uh, if this generation doesn't teach the next generation, if we don't appeal to, uh, if we don't train or develop, or if the next generation refuses to hear, refuses to listen, then um, everything that's believed about Christ could collapse. I'm not in fear of that happening because I believe there are a lot of people, young, uh, middle-aged and older, who um, are adherents to the gospel, that they believe and that they're trying to learn and grow and transmit what they believe to others, to the next generation. Um, you can also look at it that we have to transmit it to the next uh, born again generation. Not necessarily age, not a teenager needs to learn this, but that um, adults who are converted have to go through their own process of growth. So for some of our newer members, I wanna say, uh, what you're going through and the, the uh, growths that you're trying to achieve uh, are common, that all of us have had to grow in our faith. The apostles had to grow in their faith. After spending three and a half years with Jesus, they still didn't get it. And it took them a while to grasp all the concepts that he had been teaching them. So this is a very important point. Um, you can't grasp all the concepts at once. It's a process. Sometimes you have to have life experiences that make the uh, teaching alive but if you don't hear the teaching if you don't stay long enough to hear the teaching and uh, you don't pull it in then when you do have life experiences you won't have those explanations to be tied 
with the truth that is the Word of God. And it's that combination of being taught before the events happen, having truth put into your life, that when events happen, the truth can, can direct and protect you, protect your faith, protect your walk with God, and uh, protect your heart from the evil one. Uh, all of us have had incidents where our heart has tried to mislead us. Uh, fears have tried to mislead us. But the Word of God will teach you, will strengthen you. And you've got to have that before you need it. You've got to put it in. You've got to eat it before you need it.